Imagine your life. Imagine all the good times, the people, the parties, the passion for what you love. Think about the things that made you feel enjoyment. Think about the things that made you who you are. Now imagine if all within a second that was taken away. All within a second, your life was paused. My name is Cole Kajajian. And this is my story. I've thought for a while about how I was going to do this. I've tried many different ways of shooting what I'm about to say here today. And over the past year of documenting my journey with cancer, I thought all the different ways in which I was going to tell my story, was it going to be a narration? Was it going to be uh, some type of creative narrative story? Uh, but in one moment I realized what it truly needed to be and that was to just kind of tell the truth of how it was, how it is, and to show things in the most candid way. When I got the news that I had cancer, it came as a very big shock to uh, me and my family. I was at one second just finishing up a semester at college, uh, a pretty busy and rigorous semester, and I was so excited to finally have a break. Little did I know I was very, very far from having a break. Um, in fact, my life was all about to change. I went to a party one of the uh, last few weeks of school and I had gotten the flu from someone while I was there. When I got home, I went to the hospital to the emergency room as things started getting worse and with being the pandemic, you know, it could have been COVID, it could have been pneumonia because of the weather, but something was off. And after a couple rounds of testing, uh, I was put in front of a TV or computer screen uh, with my brother and my mom and my father in my dining room. And I was on this telehealth meeting with these two doctors who diagnosed me with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The moment that they told me that I had cancer my whole world just stopped. My whole entire life was paused in that exact moment. A lot of people, when they would hear news like this, would start thinking about all the ways in which it was going to affect themselves. But for me, it was a bit different. For me, I started thinking about all the people around me. I started thinking about 
how this was going to affect them. And when I got that diagnosis, for me, it, it was just another medical diagnosis. I was so used to getting, you know, one issue or another that ended with me being in the hospital. So in that moment, I was like, well, this is just something I have to get through and we're all gonna get through it together. You know, I, I said at the time that I knew what it was, but I really didn't know what, you know, the treatment had in store for me. And that was only a few days before Christmas. And that was a very different Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. A few days after that, I was admitted to uh, the hospital in Manhattan. And I started my uh, journey with uh, chemotherapy. The first experience that I had uh, as this process started was getting this gigantic stack of papers of all these different side effects of what could happen to me. Things that you normally wouldn't want to see uh, that could happen to you. Some were minor side effects, some were the most common side effects that most people associate with having cancer, and that would be hair loss, which I eventually did lose. Some other side effects could be, you know, severe amounts of pain, and that I definitely endured, along with uh, neuropathy in my nerves and a lot more. There were pains that I never thought I would experience uh, during this time, both physically and mentally. Um, for the first month and a half, I was uh, essentially living in the hospital um, and I was in isolation. Um, I hadn't seen the sun nor uh, had a, a breath of fresh air for the entirety of my uh, first phase of chemo treatment. I was in bed so much that my body started to aggressively atrophy. I started losing my muscle. I lost over 20 pounds and uh, all the bad things just started to add up. You see, the chemotherapy doesn't just affect your body, it affects your mind. The different steroids, the different meds, they all have an influence in one way or another. If it isn't causing a burning sensation in the hands and feet, it could cause a numbness to you, all your feelings, your emotions, and that's exactly what started happening to me. And that started to really affect my relationships with people. You know, especially my close relationships where my emotions had a, a big impact on how things went. And I, you know, would love to say that, or I guess I, I would love to justify all those things with, you know, oh, it, the cancer, the chemo, it's all because of that. And yes, it was. But it also felt like it wasn't even me anymore. Like Kolka Jagian was slowly fading away. And trying to come to terms with that and also trying to push past, past that and still be myself and still strive to feel all the things I have always felt before, telling myself that this is temporary, telling myself and telling those people that this was something more than what was in my control, it was, it was really hard. It was really hard and uh, that, that didn't stop.
but I'm an optimist. And uh, as an optimist, I every day just tried to look the best that I could, say the best things to myself to reassure myself. And with having a great support system, I was getting through the days. Eventually, because I was responding so well in the hospital to treatment, I was able to go home early. And uh, within the next few weeks, as I started my second phase of treatment, I got one of the best calls someone with cancer could ever get. I was in remission. So in a way, I had beat the cancer. The leukemia cells were gone from my bone marrow, from my spine, from my blood. But things were only just beginning. You see, I might have, I might have won the battle with cancer, but I still needed to win the war with chemo. Because you see, in order to maximize the potential of being cured, uh, with my diagnosis, uh, I had a, and I have a, a three-year treatment program to ensure that I stay cured, that those leukemia cells don't come back. So far, it's going pretty well. I started doing everything that I could to rebuild my strength. But to combat with that, I was going through some of the more intense of uh, my chemo treatment. Uh, having different medications start that was essentially the reason why I started to lose hair, to lose more weight, and uh, to even lose a little bit more of myself. I found myself sitting in dark corners of my room, surrounded by nothing but just shadows, and uh, I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't feel an identity. I didn't feel any worth. I didn't feel anything. Eventually I started to resist those side effects. I was able to gain a tolerance in a way to a lot of the medications that I was taking. And uh, that allowed me to start finding some enjoyment in the little that I could. It's been over six months now since, you know, I got my diagnosis back in uh, December. Uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Um, and most days I have uh, needed the aid and help of my lovely parents and brother to get what I need. But today, um, I decided I was finally ready to go out and get back on the road and behind the wheel myself uh, because I miss driving. I always loved driving and it always made me feel uh, very free. And I'm tired of sitting on the couch. I kind of want to, you know, with the beautiful days that we have now in the summer and the little bit of, you know, strength I've built back up. Uh, to really enjoy it and you know one step at a time but it almost feels natural uh, even with the knee pain uh. <laughs> during the time that I was going through chemo uh, everyone was away and for those that could come around like my best friend Kyle they don't realize how much of a difference that they made. The people who were there who did support me, they don't realize how much of a difference 
that they had, the impact that they had, and the strength that they gave me to keep on moving. Hi, Ko. I am just recording this video to say that I am with you and I am wishing you the best right now and always. And I hope you the best, okay? And soon you are going to be okay and we are going to have so much fun together. I love you so much and I am sending all my love for you. You're not alone. I love you. The best way for me to have gotten through everything that I did was to have a mantra. And that mantra was day by day, moment by moment, breath by breath. I went by that and I never looked back. I never looked at anything differently. I couldn't. It wasn't in the cards for me. Even if my heart was broken, even if my days were sour, even if I felt like complete crap and I could not get out of bed. I knew that I would just have to get from this day to the next because, well, when you're going through cancer and you're going through chemo and you're feeling all these things from the numbness to the overstimula overstimulation, your mindset is almost all that you have. The way that you're looking at things is almost all that you have. And I was so tired of being tired. I was so tired of feeling so weak. I was so tired of trying to get up and move around and not be able to go more than five steps without being out of breath or feeling like my muscles are just going to collapse with my bones and I'd just be on the ground. And sometimes I ended up on the ground. Stairs and I are not good friends and I, we weren't before my diagnosis and we continue to not be. So eventually once I started uh, to gain some little strength and energy back as I went off and on certain chemos and uh, medications, I started going to physical therapy and occupational therapy and the people that I got to work with as well as the nurses in the hospitals, and my doctors, that became the group that I was surrounded by, that became my, my peers, my friends, at least that's how I saw them. When you're not around people your age for a year, you, you tend to start looking elsewhere for, uh, you know, any type of dynamic or relationship and those people were amazing in, you know, making sure that I didn't feel alone through what was the loneliest journey I've ever experienced. Because I knew I had people there for me. I knew I had my family, I knew I had some friends, some really, really good friends, both at home and at the school that I was so eager to get back to. I started pushing myself harder and harder as much as I can, sometimes too much, which is something that I frequent doing. I always find myself pushing my limits and sometimes that's not the most healthiest thing to do. But sometimes if you want to make real progress, you gotta bite the bullet and deal with the pain and endure. And if there's one thing that I can say that I'm good at, it's knowing how to endure. But I wouldn't have been able to do that without the support system that I've had. My mom, my dad, my brother, my best friends, all the relationships that I had. And when I say that, the people who were there with me, who supported me, 
the people that motivated me to get to the next day, the people that I wanted to get back to that I hadn't seen for so long. They're the reason why I'm still standing here today. They're the reason why I wanted to get stronger again. The entirety of who I am is the stories that I and the people around me share. The entirety of who I am is being able to try and help people tell their stories. But I started documenting what I was going through last year because I first knew that if I was ever going to get back to being able to help people with their stories, I'd have to be able to tell my own first. So that's why I'm doing this and that's why I'm here today. It didn't really hit that I had cancer, that I had leukemia until quite a ways into uh, my treatment. I thought I was going to be able to go back to school with only missing one semester. And when I was told that I couldn't and that I wouldn't be able to get back to my studies, to my passions, and to my friends, it broke something in me, something more than what I had already felt like I had lost. To know that it was going to be even more months, even more time of being away from the people that I loved, it sent me into tears. I ran to the corner of the room while I was at the hospital. My dad was there to, you know, console me, but nothing could change or fix the fact that this journey was going to be a lot longer than I expected. You see, that's the thing. People don't always think about chemo and what it does to you on the mental side, what cancer does to you on the mental side. And in the way that it did impact my relationships, myself, it tore me apart but in the process, it was also helping me build myself into a newer, better, stronger person. I just didn't know it yet. Maybe if I had that mindset earlier on, even, even though I had my optimistic attitude, maybe certain things could have been better as I was going through my journey. But I learned also very early on that playing with the what-ifs is a dangerous game. And uh, I don't feel like playing that game. But with not being able to do anything, and in many, many cases feeling very, very alone, constantly questioning my worth, not being able to do much to contribute, to anything, to anyone. It was killing me. But I had my moments. I had my moments where I did have some fun. I had my moments where I got to see my best friend Kyle. Hey, I haven't seen you in a minute. Yo. Don't How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Come on in. What's 
See, Cole? It's not just you. One more ball joke and I'm going to shake your head. Sometimes, because of how limited I was, I would have to kind of improvise and, well, if there's one thing I also know best besides enduring is how to improvise. I still have a little bit over a year and a half left before I can say that I, I beat it all, that I beat leukemia, that I beat the chemo. I have a year and a half left of being in the hospital and uh, getting these treatments and taking these daily pills. But I wouldn't trade my story for the world. I wouldn't trade who I am today for the world. In the days that I spent all my time and all my energy and all my pain in the hospital, the days where I was just either clocked out on drugs or I was just stuck in a really uncomfortable bed trying to watch a movie off of the tiny TV in the corner that was built into the wall. I knew that I was going to eventually get somewhere. And I finally have. But during that time, I experienced and I saw more pain than just what I was feeling. Cancer doesn't just affect the patient, it affects their loved ones. And not only did it hurt to see how much this all hurt my family and my friends, but also to see the pain of other patients around me, the crying, the screams. There's a lot to take in. You have to get hit hard, right? I mean, otherwise it just stays in you. You gotta get hit hard and then just, okay, I, I took the hit, now it's time to move on. You hit me and it's gone, now it's time to move on. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It also gave me a lot of perspective. A lot of perspective on life, on what not to take for granted, who not to take for granted, to cherish every moment, 
because you never know what's going to happen next. One day I was just producing a TV show with all my friends at the TV studio at my school. The one that I am currently recording this video in. The next second, I'm bald and I weigh about 20 to 30 pounds less and I'm using a cane as I walk around my house and I'm not able to go anywhere else with the only way of being able to talk to anyone is through my phone, through video chats and phone calls and texts, which isn't really the greatest way of living, but even in the darkest of shadows, and I was in the darkest of any shadow I have ever witnessed, I still could see the light. And that's the thing. If you or if anyone you ever know goes through something like this, even when it doesn't feel like it, there's always hope. final day before I go into maintenance, final day before a nice long break, felt like this would never be over, no it's not over, it's not going to be over for a long time. beginning of the end of all this. This year has gone by so quick, yet every day feels like it lasts so long. But soon enough, I will be back in school. I will I'll be a lot stronger. I finally have my truck. I'm registered for classes. I'm so excited for what's next. Hello everybody, my name is Coca JGN and as you can see, I'm behind a wheel. And you might be wondering, what wheel am I behind? Well, I am uh, behind the Toyota Tacoma 2023. Uh, it is my first car, it's uh, first truck, and I'm finally driving again, and I'm gonna be taking this back up to school really, really soon, and I'm very, very excited. Uh, I feel good, I feel really good, and I'm, I'm happy that I can kind of have a little bit more freedom than I've been able to have uh, all year. It's been 11 months uh, of just isolation and just being stuck in the house, barely seeing anyone. Um, so things are turning around and I'm really happy. And I can't wait to get back up to Plattsburgh. Yeah. I used to wear a, uh, a bracelet um, and it had a, a cross on it. And it reminded me to never lose faith, to never lose hope in you know, what I believe and 
when I turned it around in my own head, I saw a sword. And it also reminded me to never stop fighting. But even when you have no energy left, you have nothing left to fight with, even when you know that you have so much that you want to fight for, hope and faith always remains. It will always be there, as long as you allow it to be there, as long as you believe in it. During chemo, I almost stopped believing, believing in hope, believing in faith, believing in everything. I felt like in so many different ways, not just medically, but socially and mentally, I just felt like I was cursed to just endure everything and anything that God would, you know, fire down upon me. But then I realized that it wasn't, it wasn't God that was doing this to me. Or whatever is uh, above and beyond up there, but God is what I believe. No, it was, it was quite the opposite. If I stopped believing, if I stopped having hope for myself, if I stopped fighting, I wouldn't just be stopping for myself, I'd be stopping for all the ones that I'm also fighting with and fighting to get back to. And sure, from the beginning to the journey to the end of the journey, it wasn't always with all the same people. And my journey's still continuing, but for the people who have stuck around and who have been there, I'm here today because of them. And for all the people who are still in that hospital, I'm fighting for them too. I've been granted the ability and the possibility of being able to walk out of those hospital doors when I'm, many, many can't. And I'm not gonna let that be for nothing. I'm not going to let my experience and my knowledge and what I have seen and what I have lost and what I have gained be for nothing. I will not let pain be in vain. I will not let those shadows that I saw and felt be for nothing. And so, I guess that's why I'm here talking to you today, telling you my story. Now I could talk about every single day of the last year of my life, every single event that altered me in some type of way. I could talk about all the great ups and downs, but when I was documenting this journey, I also made sure to not make the mistake to forget to just live through it and um, well I'm living today and I'm very very fortunate to be able to say that it is New Year's Eve, 2022. The sounds that you may be hearing are this 
amazing uh, foot massager that was gifted to my father for Christmas, but uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, so, we have made it through this entire year. Ain't that right, Mama? We made it through this entire year. We made it through the year. But four years to go, I hope. <laughs> I don't pass out on somebody. <laughs> but it's been a crazy year. We've gotten through it. And today is just a nice, calm, at home New Year's Eve. Which Thinking about one year ago, I was laying in a hospital bed, staring up at, you know, the ball dropping in New York, in New York uh, City. So this is very different. Also, excuse my bedhead, but at least I actually uh, have bedhead again, which is a, a, a curse, but also a blessing because it means I actually have hair again. Like, a good amount of hair, so I'm happy about that. I agree. What a year. Here's to the next one. I'm going to make sure, with everything in my power, that I take this information, I take this experience, and I push that idea of never losing hope and never forgetting to cherish every moment forward. I want to inspire, I want to motivate, I want to be a storyteller and I want to help people continue their stories and know how to tell their stories. My life was paused for so long. And as everything around me was moving, as I witnessed my friends continuing on with their lives, my family continuing on with their lives, I never felt like I was more stuck in place. I wanted to press the play button. I kept on trying so hard. <laughs> but I was stuck on pause. I was, of course, happy to get to see my friends experience new things in their lives and have fun. It also hurt because I couldn't be there with them. I want him nothing more than to be there with him. I, I, I kept on saying to myself every single day, I wish I could do this with them, with him, with her. I wish I could be a part of that. But I couldn't. And I knew why, and I, and I knew I just had to be patient and do what I had to do. As much as I'm an optimist, I also know how to be a realist, and I understood that my circumstances were out of my control, and I knew that while limited, I could push myself in certain ways to do certain things, but it was very dangerous for me to do much being so immunocompromised and being so weak and being very limited in the uh, travel time, per se, between me and all the people that I cared about. It was hard to come to terms with that and to get through that, but I understood that this is just right now. But this is not the end all, and I, will not, I did not believe that it would be the end all. I knew I would get back to them. I knew I'd get back to everything that would be there waiting for me 
when I was finally able to step outside and uh, breathe in that fresh air of freedom again. And from the first breath that I took after the month of living in the hospital, to the moment that I stepped back on my college campus in this spring of 2023, that first breath outside the hospital and that first breath on this college campus, the best breaths I've ever taken in my entire life. And after the first week of college, after the first week of finally being back, I started thinking, I can finally press the play button again. That although I still have a journey ahead of me, that I still have chemo to go through, spinal taps to go through, whatever other rigorous procedures that may come my way. I'm back and I feel things again in a way that I haven't been able to in a long time. And even if those things are sometimes bad things, sometimes sad things, in a way, although it isn't the same as what normal would be for someone else, the sense of normalcy is the most freeing thing I have ever experienced in my entire life. So, I have now finished my first day of uh, kind of returning back to college after a year of being away. And uh, it felt really good to just go out there and get to, you know, talk to some new people and get to see some old and kind of just see myself around campus walking and driving around. It, in some ways it feels different, in some ways it feels amazingly the same. And it's, uh, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back. Someone asked me recently if I was happy. And for a while, I would say, yeah, man, you know, I mean, in some ways, yeah, some ways, no. But as I stand here today, I can say that I am. I've had a pretty good damn life. And yeah, I've experienced a lot from getting a gigantic catheter-sized uh, tube going into my bicep, all the way to my heart, to breaking my arm behind my back as I try to jump up to the monkey bars for the first time, to first relationships and first kisses, and to traveling Europe to getting to go, the, go away to school and uh, be in nature and go camping for the first time, record my first short film and make the best of friends I have ever had. I am happy and I did not give up because I knew that I would get here eventually. I knew that one day, this journey that makes me feel like my entire life is paused would finally play again. Hi. Um, today is May 19th. 
2023. It's a Friday and it's my final day here in Plattsburgh for my junior year. Finally got around to finishing that. Um, last night I spent my time with all the guys and friends and uh, messed around and had a lot of fun all the way up until the sun came up. And then I got back here and I realized I had a lot of packing to do. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. It's uh, past 7 a.m. now. So the plan is to get a couple hours of sleep and then meet up with my dad and see uh, how we can uh, Tetris this into my truck. And I think that's going to be really fun to figure out how that works. I'm not really even fully done, but I'm like 95% done um, with packing everything. But uh, I just wanted to take this moment to record this. Because, well, it was over like that. I got here... And for as long of a semester as it was, it went by so quick. And I, uh, I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to come back here to uh, continue my schooling when I did. Um, I got to have a lot of last hurrahs with a lot of friends who are now graduating tomorrow which is weird to think about, but um, I know they're all gonna do great things with whatever paths they go on next. You can see me shaking. Um, but uh, it was a semester full of a lot of different emotions as they typically are but it was also just a really good semester with friends and uh, even getting to see family every once in a while um, and I got to get back in front of the camera I got to be a part of a lot of different types of clubs and organizations and get to be a part of some really cool events uh, for good causes um, like for, you know, fundraising money for St. Jude's Cancer Research Center. And, uh, that was a fun day at the rally that we had for that. Um, my time here in this suite with, uh, my friend Jeff and my time here, uh, with all the new friends that I've made and, all the time that I've gotten to spend with all my old friends have been uh, quite tremendous. And uh, it felt good to finally uh, get back into playing through each day of my life. And um, we're only moving forward from here. And I, uh, I can't wait to get back here in the fall. There's no other great way to put it but um I did it we did it thank you for watching